know how it works. Yes. Okay, I would like to introduce you to Joachim Lindberg, who will talk about XMPP and IoT. And uh, please ask questions. Make it interactive, Joachim. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Big hand. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Joachim Lindborg. I'm from Sweden. Um, this is my second time with Fostum, mar marvelous conference. And I will talk on XMPP and using it for Internet of Things. Uh, I'm f the little company I work for. We try to get technology to go over to the other side of the Death Valley where the entrepreneurs usually end up. So having technology doing energy efficiency. So that's the target I am. And we're not doing anything new here. Uh, that's the inspiration that got me to you start to do electronics. In 1951, my p uh, teacher read a paper on the smart home controlled by finger pads. So we had 99 unique addresses in the switchboard. So he could control the lights in the living room. And he could turn on the lights in the garage and open the door. Can you talk louder because there's no amplification in the back of the room? Oh, sorry, I've talked louder. Is that better? Perfect, thank you. So the smart home, 1951. And he was just planning on getting a radio equipment to do the phone padding, double number, tick, 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 to open the garage door when he comes home. So it's fairly the same thing we're doing now. Just that we're doing it with new technologies, new levels, new protocols, new physical layers, longer identifications, and longer, 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 and more and more and more. So what we now have on the Internet of Things, as we talked in the beginning of the morning, there's loads of IoT clouds where you th throw up your things, get them a, an account, and you get the data in and you do some magic with it, or hopefully NSA use it or whatever. And we get a world where we have all these nice devices, all these nice APIs, and even nicer apps. But how can anything work together? How can my refrigerator talk to this home area network, or uh, talk to the scale? Why not have the scale lock the door when you're too heavy? And who to create that service? Is it the scale company or is it Electrolux that should do it? Uh, today, you need to go back into the cloud and take care of it in one of the clouds. I can't use Electrolux Cloud to talk to the scale cloud. Too many APIs. And for me, as an energy efficiency company, I need to integrate hundreds of heating systems with their own API, their own apps, and another hundred uh, interesting alarm systems giving me more and more data. So we ended up with a need of using XMPP. So how many has seen XMPP? How many use it? Chatting, so on. So you have a Jabber ID, everybody, or XMPP ID. So you can use any server. You can use any client, any languages. It's fine, pretty good. And you can move data back and forth. We can chat, we can send messages. So yes, we can send messages. Isn't that what devices are doing? sending messages, and they need to be defined. So if I send a temperature, it's good if you understand that it is a temperature. And if you receive the temperature, wouldn't it be good if you knew it was a Celsius? So you can convert it to Fahrenheit, because that's what you know. And that's the problem today. You have a PubSub node somewhere, and you subscribe to data. You get 42, and you need to do something else to know what it is. Is it a pressure? Is it Hey, what hours or whatever. And you're stuck in some messaging pub sub area somewhere, and you can be there. In XMPP, you have pub sub. You ha could be in a multi user chat room. How about having devices anonymously talking in a chat room? You have a nickname, you don't reveal anything of your IDs, so you can say whatever you want. For example, the houses in an area could say how much power they use without revealing which house is which. But the local substation can listen and see how much power do these use 
and suddenly one pops up and uses a lot of power, oh shit, I need to do something in real time. So the use cases of our collaboration can be used in the instant messaging network to do real good things for ci smart cities, smart grid or whatever. And it's pretty much based on the first thing you do when you chat. You do a friend request. <coughs> you need to be a friend to talk. And you can be in any domain. So an alarm company having legacy whatever can create an XMPP server having tons of JIDs for any device. And I can let the smoke detector in my very proprietary alarm be friend with another very proprietary heating system. And I can orchestrate that as the owner. I can say that device should be friend with that device, especially if I run my own XMPP server. But those can have their own servers and federate each other. So going back to the area, what if there's a business model? We can have these nice Wi-Fi devices. <coughs> they will never talk to each other because there's a business model here. They won't start talking to each other that way unless the businesses are agreeing on it. And therefore, any company could federate any other company. Signing a treaty, we're doing services together. And suddenly, you can use the business model to create new services. And it's only then that the actual third party application provider can come in and do nice services. The way we have nice services on the phone cool apps and whatever, is because the sensors are available. An application can, <laughs> a third party provider can do any service on an iPhone getting exciting things done. A utility won't do it, and you can't do it unless you can get access to your refrigerator temperature, your outside temperature, perhaps if you're home, and it's up to you to choose who to actually let that data go to. Perhaps you would like to run that logic yourself or have it hosted somewhere. It's just another friend that's actually talking to your devices. And it could be on any domain as well. So the idea, you get a friend, but if you're a temperature friend, temperature sensor, perhaps <coughs> you could take your decisions yourself. Uh, if I friend request one of you in the audience, the audience you probably would think twice, well, is he a good guy? Or <laughs> and say, well, yes, OK. And then the other one will send a friend who writes back. So we need some best friends, grandma. So when I get a friend request, I, of course, <coughs> need to ask somebody, <laughs> is that kid over there really accessible, good guy, bad domain, or what? Yeah, it's OK. So we start talking. So the next question would be, what's the status of your alarm? <coughs> Wait a minute. Is, is that guy actually good to get that data? Grandma, will I, could I say that to him? No. So you can granularity do provisioning of any authorization of any field in a device, talking between two identities. And that identity could be anywhere. It could be in your phone because it's just another chat client. Or it could be a full system somewhere. It doesn't differentiate. So we are, if I, having devices, cross borders, utilities, alarm system, heating system, health system, whatever, you can model them as those identities. And that's the tricky thing. How can you find identities unique around so you can talk to them. IPv6 addresses. Yes. Have you ever sent an email to an IPv6 address? No, you have an identification that you know that you use. So you have sending email today. That's the most common pre-O protocol. It works fine. I can send an email to a person in any company. But it's also so that anybody can send an email to anybody. <laughs> So we get a lot of spams. Here we can only send the message if we are friending each other. 
and the domains will only talk to each other if they are federated. So you can lock yourself in as much as you want, or you can open up. So two or three companies looking good together, they can federate each other doing the fantastic service of letting your step trainer locking your refrigerator door. So you won't open the refrigerator door until you've done the 10,000 steps you should have done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's pretty tricky today to get that service done. And I can let the heat pump talk to the smoke detector to get the inside temperature. I don't need to go to the heating company buying a SIGBY device, specially approved for them, to get the inside temperature. I can use the alarm. It's already there. I have 10 temperature sensors. Well, they are a bit slow because they have 10 year old battery, but they're better than none. <coughs> and it's just a temperature. So of course I can let them share it. No problem. And your electricity meter. Does anybody get hand on their hourly meter values? No, <laughs> because it's quite complicated because they're hidden inside a utility with this co power line communication and they would like to get, you it, get it to you. So going to security, which is the main part here. What is security in XMPP? Well, we enforcing any server to any server must have encryption. Any server to any server communication is done with certifica certificates. So they won't talk to each other unless they are encrypted. That's a treaty almost every server on the internet has done today. And it's constantly increasing. If you go from a client to a server, you also have TLS and encryption. Very well known, it's been done for years. And you can go for saving a certificate to authenticate yourself. So you can go the whole way down to have a full certificate, encrypted session, get the authorization, and you have the security model all the way down to each feed. Pretty much with the standard as it, as it is. And we have also extensions for discovery and so on. So, a little demo. That's pretty much what we would like to do. And I do have a little setup. It's not here, because it's so heavy to carry around the small houses I have. And I have, of course, a Raspberry. So I have a Raspberry lying on the table. It has a relay and a peer sensor. <coughs> and we have me. So that's more or less what we have on the place. So we go and look on the demo devil's head. <laughs> and we have a house. We perhaps get it a bit higher up. And Why can I move a window? It doesn't do that. We try to make it small and then big again and reload it. Ah, no, I had a chance to. But I can't move the window. Okay. Ah, shit. Does any, do you see anything down there? No, you don't? This is distributed work, yeah. <laughs> so I'll go into a chat client, because this is all about chat friends, isn't it? So I have a lot of friends here, uh, different people. So I have an interesting friend called GoGoNet number eight. And we have a very dull communication. Um, I can say hi to it in uh, small letters, otherwise it won't understand. And it receives, well, I'm on IP address, mm, blah, blah, blah. And I can say uh, toggle. So I send it a toggle. And if we are lucky, we could go back in and we will see one of the little lamps over there. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so we say toggle again <laughs> and we go back and it will I didn't send it. Yeah. 
That's the way. Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> so what's up here then? Well, I have a Wemo switch. I have uh, uh, these four thirty-three megahertz things: Telstick, uh, wireless, proprietary utility, C-Wave, uh, proprietary uh, alarm. And of course, we would like to be <laughs> quite uh, interoperable, wouldn't we? And the windows are moving around, so I have a little JavaScript client. So I'll do uh, XMPP connect to my little account. <coughs> and I realized I have a few friends. And these are friends that support the extension I am a device. So when you looked at my friend list, it was quite long. But these are the three that actually have device capabilities. So I will ask Dix number eight, what can you do? And it answered, yes, I have a peer. It's false. Uh, we could have a, a other information to it. It's a uh, and I have a relay. It's also false. So I would say relay true. And we turn the lamp on again. So that's pretty much easy to send and receive XML specification open data. Very impossible to do wrong, really. It's a XML you need to supply to the schema, to the notion of how you'd read and write. So it's very open and easy. So we've done another small home controller client. <coughs> so now I'm logging into what uh, three di three 30 different villa owners has in Stockholm. Again, there's friends popping up. I have a little house called House 4. And it has several fields. Okay. Different values. A Boolean, HD control, power, power, message switch, Wemo switch, Boolean, just a field. And that's mapped to a Wemo switch. So my house, as a single entity, has a lot of shit behind it. Open hub. C-Wave, CB, whatever you want. But I have, have now a single way of saying a Boolean, and I could change it to false. Uh, no, I can change it to on. To say false was the thing I, sa I said <laughs> false, and it sent a uh, one. So we turned off the Wemo switch. And you didn't see that, so we tried again. So that's quite a lot of traffic to get the Wemo switch message in. But we have unified information. And in the same, I could go for uh, the Zigbee one. And. Uh, We're now going all the way to the XMPP server, down again, into an API, down again, around, and into the Zigbee system, and turning the light in the house on. So, yeah, right, but shouldn't we be able to do this? Um, yes, of course you can. And if I find the PowerPoint window, <laughs> there it is. Um, you can now try to friend, if you have a Jabber client, you take your phone and you're friending this gogonet6 at jabber.se as a new buddy. Anybody there? <laughs> Trying? No, not really. No. Just raise your hand if you're doing it. Oh, there's a few trying it, yeah? Uh, during that, I'll go to my message client, since I'm already a friend of this GoGoNet thing, uh, and I say they to toggle the relay. Mm. 
You hear the tick? I hear it ticking. <laughs> you in the front row can confirm. I'm not cheating. They're nodding their heads slightly. <laughs> so it's quite easy to get this done. Start up, do a makerspace. Now we're chatting, which is not really the interoperable language we should use. You can talk German or you can talk whatever. I, I can implement whatever language in my script. But it's a very quick tr prototyping thing. And then you could switch over to supporting any of the extensions we're talking about. So hopefully there's any of you. What are you supposed to say? Well, send a question mark to it. Ah, somebody click the relay. So send a T, it will toggle it. And we will have a race situation of anybody <laughs> toggling this relay, but <laughs> you can now continuously toggle my relay, even when you're not here. <laughs> so a more appropriate thing would, you perhaps didn't see that one, but that's the U-lamp at my office them you at jabber.se. And if you send a question mark to it, it will give you a hue, saturation, brightness of its current situation. And you can control it. <coughs> then the magical thing would be that we actually look on that to see if anything happened. And during that, we take some questions. Uh, the question was, how do the clients authenticate to the XMPP server? And they can do pretty much any kind of authentication available today. Uh, I, anybody on this server side that can verify OAuth or... Is there any of this XMPP server supporting OAuth as the authentication? I can, I can probably answer the question for you then. Yes. Okay, so OAuth is in the production. Uh, I know that we could use certificates to do the uh, TLS sessions. Uh, that's pretty much good. So answering a question that hasn't been done, no, you probably shouldn't do it on a little Cortex M3 thing. You need something more. Raspberry's fine, somewhere there. But I guess the Moore's Law would quite quickly go down the, the drain. <laughs> the, yeah? This is only client side. We don't change anything on server side. The messages are just routed, as any instant messages. So we're just extending the messages. So you ha need to have a client uh, implementation that does the actual stanzas. So I've done, this is Python Sleek XMPP client. Uh, we have uh, JavaScript in my JavaScript view. Uh, there's uh, Java uh, going on. Uh, we just had almost uh, Erlang compilation yesterday. <laughs> so pretty any of the p language clients can support this very easily with the plugin models they have. Yes? Yes, and of course you can do whatever you would like to do if you are using both. But if you're going for a standard, that was discussed on the XMPP Summit first day Friday, how to do this. How to get end-to-end -end encryption done in a standardized way 
over the XMPP network? So that's a very good question, and it's been talked about. It is happening things, <laughs> and I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, there is uh, WebRTC things do done. Uh, my so I've used Chrome sockets to a server uh, from a uh, Cordova environment. So going straight on instead of going to an HTTP binding of anything. Yes, so that's on the way. And any more? Okay, I st you haven't done the big question. But it's XML. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is XML. It's a lot of XML. And <coughs> therefore, it is extensible. You have the namespaces. You know the schemas. You know that this is what you get. And you can version it. So I can support one version. And there's an uh, W3.3 standard <laughs> called EXI that compress it fantastically good in a standardized way. I'm going to toggle the speech now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joachim, for an excellent presentation. I need to be your friend first. Yes. <laughs>